touchdown here in Ibiza, Spain. Welcome to the 2023 vlog. If you've watched the channel before you know that as a DJ I like to go off to different clubs, bars etc all around the world to try and see other DJs play. I think it gives you the most inspiration for your own DJ sets and if you're an up and coming DJ and you want to get a feel on how other DJs kind of craft a set it's actually really really useful just to go and watch other DJs play. Here in Ibiza we are really lucky that a lot of the nights you get some really really big names play so throughout this course of this week going to a whole range oh my god there's a plane flying above the airport is literally just around the corner here um so throughout the course of this week we are going to a whole range of different clubs different music styles seeing different DJs play. Now, when it comes to Ibiza, if you're coming here for the nightlife and you have never been before, you're probably gonna be staying in one of two places, either Playa del Bossa, which is where we are now, or San Antonio. Both are really, really good places to stay because there's loads of accommodation options, loads of hotels, loads of restaurants, and they're both really like good locations in terms of accessing the nightlife. I think a lot of people when they first come to Ibiza don't realize that the clubs are sort of all in different locations and not in one place. You do have to travel around a little bit. So do be prepared for that. Now, as a personal preference, when I come to Ibiza, I always stay in Playa de Bossa, basically because two of the major clubs, Ushuaia and High. High's been voted the number one nightclub in the world for the second year running. In fact, I'm stood outside it right now. And Ushuaia, uh, also in the top 100 nightclubs in the world, are walking distance from most of the hotels here in Playa de Bossa. If you're staying in San Antonio, it's gonna cost you about 30 euros in a taxi to get over here. And then if you want to access some of the other big nightclubs like Pasha, DC10 or Amnesia, you will have to get a taxi, but it is slightly closer, so slightly cheaper to get over to those venues versus if you are staying in San Antonio. Now, when it comes to San Antonio, there are two really famous nightclubs there. There is Eden and also S Paradis. S Paradis, unfortunately, doesn't seem to be as busy as it once was, like the glory days of it are kind of over, which is a shame. But Eden has certainly got a really good lineup of events all throughout the week. San Antonio is also home of the pool party. So Ibiza Rocks, really famous venue, is located in San Antonio and also O Beach. Uh, Wayne Lineker's uh, beach club that's really famous amongst British people. Plenty of options no matter what resort you are going to stay in in terms of nightlife but do be prepared to travel around a bit if you want a bit of everything. What I'd perhaps recommend doing is that if you come out to Ibiza is have a look on a website like Ibiza Spotlight, plan out all of the events that you're going to want to go to and then pick your hotel based on where the majority of the events you want to attend are going to be. Um, I made the mistake the first time in staying in San Antonio and I ended up just spending an absolute fortune in taxis going backwards and forwards to Playa de Bossa and all the other clubs because I didn't go to any events in San Antonio. So do plan ahead. In terms of our first two nights here, tonight we're over at High. We're gonna be checking out Glitterbox, which is a defected event, uh, very much disco house, vocal house, nothing too intense. High is obviously the, one of the best clubs or the best club as voted by DJ Mag. In terms of the lineup tonight, we've got Basement Jacks, the Shapeshifters, so some pretty big names on the Glitterbox lineup. So I'm really excited to go see that. And then tomorrow night, something completely different, somewhere I've never been before, despite coming to Ibiza year after year. We're going to a nightclub called DC10. Um, 
not the typical night that I would usually pick. It's called Circo Loco. So I'm really excited to see that. I am really open to all types of music, to be honest, as a DJ. So I just want to see what it's all about down there. So I'll put in some clips now of the first two nights and then let you know my thoughts straight after that. Video clips there from both Glitterbox at High and also DC10. I will say, if you come to Ibiza, you have to check out High as a nightclub concept. It is literally incredible. It's such a premium feeling nightclub. Yes, it does come with a bit of a premium price tag, but it is honestly like nothing else that I have seen. There is a lot of emphasis on VIP in there. However, there is also ample space to dance. In terms of ticket prices, you are gonna be paying a premium there. Anything between 50 and 80 euros to get in. For Glitterbox last night it was 60 euros and a drink has gone up in price since last time I came. It was 23 euros for a spirit and a mixer and they are very strict with the measurements here, which is very unusual for Spain. If you want a beer, it's gonna cost you about 17 euros and a bottle of water, get this, 14 euros. So do expect to spend a lot of money if you are going out in high. However, the lighting, the production in there, it's just second to none. It's an incredible experience. So I think everyone that comes to Ibiza should try it at least once. And then finally, DC10. It's actually the first time I've ever been there since all of these times that I've been to Ibiza. Very much an old school Ibiza style nightclub in terms of no VIP, no glitz, no glamour, just literally music, a big sound system, very minimal lighting in there as well. Um, so that was quite nice to see, very much an underground feel. So a lot of the music in there was very underground house and techno most of the night. And in terms of like prices, it's a lot more affordable than the likes of High. So I think a spirit and a mixer in there was like 17 euros, still free poured. So very generous measures, like typical sort of Spanish way of doing things. Uh, beer was about nine euros and a bottle of water about six euros. So really not too expensive when you compare Compare that to the likes of High. One thing, however, that really let DC10 down for me, in my opinion, was just the sheer volume of people they were letting into that venue. Like it, to me, did not feel safe. Like I get like being in a busy nightclub. I love DJing to a busy nightclub, but when you're that crammed in to a space, like the only thought going through my mind is if something went wrong here it could be dangerous but and it's just not enjoyable the dance floor is there so you can dance like to be just crammed in like a sardine was not very appealing at all so we actually left way before the night finished because it was just not enjoyable like people just shoving past you is difficult to go to the loo it's difficult to move anywhere to be honest anyways on to the next party we are off to the paradise opening party this is jamie jones's residence i'm expecting a lot of house music this is over at amnesia going into san antonio first just for some dinner and some drinks and then heading over there and as always i'll get some clips i'll share with you my thoughts as well It's a lovely morning here at the Playa de Mbosa Beach and there were a few clips there from the last few nights here in Ibiza including the opening party of Paradise at Amnesia with Jamie Jones headlining. That was definitely a party that went on and on and on. They were still going at like seven o'clock in the morning with light coming through the windows which was absolutely crazy. We went 
back to DC 10 on the Thursday for solid grooves and then Pasha on Friday and also finishing up with Elro at Amnesia on Saturday. Now in terms of some of the highlights for me, DC 10 on the Thursday definitely made up for Monday. It was far less busy, so it's actually great to go to DC 10, a club that I've never been to before, and enjoy a night. When it's that busy on Monday, it just really wasn't enjoyable, so it was good to go to a night that wasn't as packed. Another highlight is definitely Amnesia, Elro. What an incredible night. The production, even if you don't really like house music, just going for the production, just seeing how they put together this night is really quite something to, almost like you've got to see it to believe it. Like I've never seen anything like it. It's almost like they put a circus show on above the, um, above the crowd throughout the night. It's, it's honestly one of the craziest nights I've been to. And then finally, the one that did let me down a little bit, Pasha. Uh, we went to see Music On on Friday with Marco Carola and Frankie Rosado. Now, I love Pasha as a venue. It's got a lot of history. The sound system in there is definitely one of the best on the island. It will absolutely blow your socks off. So if you're a DJ, make sure you bring your earplugs <laughs> because it, honestly, it's so loud in there. But because Pasha is a slightly smaller venue and it's got a big VIP area, one thing that let it down for me, in my opinion, it's just the sheer volume of people that they're letting into that venue. If you are getting there early, that's fine. If you find a space on the dance floor, that's great. But it's going to get to a point on that dance floor where you are going to be crammed in like a sardine, especially on a Friday. Well, that seemed to be the case anyway. And you absolutely cannot move. And that, for me, just detracts from the whole experience a little bit. You know, for me, when you're paying 50, 60 euros to get into a nightclub, you want not a massive space, but you want to actually be able to move and not feel like a, a tin sardine, you know? I mean, and also as well, from a DJing perspective, it can't be fun for them watching a crowd that are basically forced to just stand on the spot. You, they want to see people enjoying themselves, dancing away to their tunes and, and everything. So that has been a little bit of a detractor from this week, just the sheer volume of people that they're letting into these venues. Luckily it only happened twice. But if you're coming July and August, the peak of the summer, we're still in June. So I don't know what it's going to be like here in July and August. I sound like I've been a little bit negative with regards to my thoughts on the clubs this year. That is not the case of like generally. I have actually had an amazing week. It's been great to see some amazing world-class DJs in some amazing world-class venues. Probably some of the best venues in the world, in my opinion. So that's always great to see. Um, it was just a shame that a couple of the, the venues were a little bit busier, which I wouldn't have expected for June. We are only in June. So who knows what July and August will bring. I would probably advise, if possible, if you are visiting Ibiza, do not come in July and August because I have heard that it is crazy, crazy busy. If you're staying in Playa del Bossa, do let me know. Um, I do know quite a few of the hotels around here. I'm not like an Ibiza expert or travel agent by any means, but um, I have um, I have been here quite a few times, so do let me know and I will um, try my best to help you if you've got any questions. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.